Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, bed crimers. As always, I wish you the best. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. Let me just ask that after listening to or watching this video, if you learned something or enjoyed it, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Now let's dig in. Good morning. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today's the day for closing arguments in the Lori Vallow trial, aka the Doomsday Mom. Depending on how things go, it may also be the day we get a verdict. That depends on how long the closing arguments run and if the jury has time to deliberate and if the jurors are unanimous as to whether Lori is guilty or innocent. Victim J.J. Vallow's grandfather, Larry Woodcock, is outside the courthouse today. Take a listen to what he had to say. So I am ready for this. Are you all ready for it? I think that it's going to be. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a in case you couldn't hear that, he said, so we're ready for this. I think it's going to be a great day. He went on to say, hopefully we have a fair and righteous verdict. Note that yesterday, Larry felt ill in the courtroom and EMTs had to be called. He ended up being fine, thank God. It's been a long six weeks for Kay and Larry Woodcock, and the stakes are so high for them. Let's pray they get the justice they're seeking for J.J., Tylee and for Tammy Daybell. Once the jurors begin deliberating, they're going to have to decide if there's enough reasonable doubt, meaning doubt as to whether Lori Vallow is guilty, after careful consideration of the evidence. If each juror finds there's reasonable doubt, the jury must find Vallow innocent. Their vote has to be unanimous on that. If they cannot all agree as to whether she's guilty or innocent, then there will be a hung jury, which basically means a deadlocked jury, a jury that cannot agree upon a verdict. Usually, hung juries result in the case being tried again, something I'm sure the state of Idaho would be very upset about due to the costs involved in such a lengthy trial. Vallow is facing two counts of first-degree murder, one for her seven-year-old son, J.J., the other for her 16-year-old daughter, Tylee. If she is convicted on both those counts, she will be facing two consecutive life sentences in prison. She is also facing three counts of conspiracy in the deaths of J.J. Tylee and Chad Daybell's wife, Tammy. Conspiracy in Idaho is defined as follows— if two or more persons combine or conspire to commit any crime or offense prescribed by the laws of the state of Idaho, and one or more of such persons does any act to affect the object of the combination or conspiracy, each shall be punishable upon conviction in the same manner and to the same extent as is provided under the laws of the state of Idaho for the punishment of the crime or offenses that each combined to commit, end quote. Pretty wordy. Basically, it means if two or more people conspire to commit a crime, in this case murder, and they are found guilty, they will receive a punishment for the crime or offense they conspired to commit. So Lori Vallow, if found guilty on all three conspiracy charges could face a maximum of three life sentences. And then Lori is also facing a charge of grand theft for collecting the social security payments for JJ and Tylee after she knew the children were no longer alive. If convicted on this charge, Lori could face a maximum of 20 years in prison and a fine of $10,000. So things are looking pretty bleak for Lori Vallow, although based on her smiles and joking with her counsel in court, she doesn't seem worried about it. Her defense counsel decided to rest their case this past Tuesday without mounting a defense of their client, even though they claim she's innocent. 
They also declined to put Vallow or any other witnesses on the stand to testify on her behalf. But while her team claims they don't believe the state has proven its case, the prosecution has been relentless. It put 60 witnesses on the stand and basically recreated the events that transpired during the deadly months in 2019 when Charles Vallow JJ, Tylee, and Tammy died. I wonder if Lori's defense team is just secretly throwing in the towel because they see the writing on the wall. There were so many tidbits of damning evidence in the case. A strand of Lori's hair on duct tape wrapped around JJ's deceased body. Chad and Lori's discussions of needing to get rid of obstacles in the way of them getting married in which it was clear those obstacles were Charles Vallow, J.J., Tylee, and Tammy, all of whom, Chad and Lori said, had dark spirits inhabiting their bodies and who had all become zombies. The grisly deaths and burials of J.J. and Tylee, Tammy's death by asphyxiation, video of Lori and Chad nonchalantly sitting poolside in Hawaii after the children were long dead and Tammy was barely cold in the ground, evidence showing that both Lori and Chad were fueled by their desire to get married and to get their hands on large life insurance payouts from Charles and Tammy's deaths. Audrey Baratario's testimony that Lori threatened to cut and kill her and then bury her body in a place nobody would ever find. I mean, the list goes on and on. In my opinion, it's unlikely Lori Vallow will be acquitted of all these charges. Even if the jury says they cannot say for sure that she's guilty of first-degree murder, they can still find her guilty on those charges of conspiracy to commit murder. And as I said earlier, those carry life sentences as well. She could get three consecutive life sentences for those three acts of conspiracy. And don't forget that Lori is also facing charges in Arizona for the death of her fourth husband, Charles Vallow. She will still need to be tried for those charges as well. When the jury comes to its verdict, their decision will be live-streamed and you can bet that I will be watching. So many of us have bonded from afar with JJ, Tylee, and Tammy. Photos of them, testimony about what they were like. You'd have to have a heart as cold as that of Lori, Chad, and Alex Cox not to feel love for these precious souls. I predict Lori Vallow will be heading to prison after the verdict is read. And I predict she will be having a major mental breakdown when she realizes she's not getting away with this and she's not getting out of prison ever. I really get the feeling she's still in delusion land and she still thinks she's going to be whisked away by Chad during the second coming of Jesus Christ if and when she realizes the truth that her future years will all be spent behind bars without access to Botox, without any more vacations in Hawaii, without a chance to do any more doomsday podcasts, without loin fires and makeout sessions with Chad, and without realizing her position as top goddess in Chad's merry band of followers, the shit's going to hit the fan. And the reality of that will be she will find herself in a maximum security prison which is very different from a small town jail. She's going to be in the big house with some seriously dangerous people. And in prison, whether you're a male or a female, nobody wants to be housed with or friends with someone who hurt little kids. Make no mistake, female prisoners can be just as dangerous and just as angry about offenders who harm kids. Lori will likely have to be in protective custody or else the offenders who are angry are going to come for her. 
the guards best not leave Lori alone in the shower, if you know what I mean. If convicted, Lori will be the one receiving death threats. She's not going to be a powerful goddess in prison, and all her attempts to mentally conjure up fires and earthquakes are going to fall on deaf ears. As they say, when you play with fire, you eventually get burned. Relatives of JJ and Tylee said today that they're praying for Lori to be convicted. JJ's grandpa, Larry Woodcock, told the reporters outside the Ada County Courthouse in Boise, Idaho, as you heard earlier, we're all ready for this. Poor Larry wasn't feeling well yesterday, and EMTs had to be called to the courthouse to treat him. According to his wife, Kay, he's okay now. I'm sure this whole thing has been very stressful for them. Tammy Daybell's aunt and cousin, Vicki Hoban and Julie Brooks, respectively, said they were extremely nervous, but that the end of the trial will, and I quote, give us some relief. Let's send prayers and positive vibes for all the family members and for the victims. May JJ, Tylee, and Tammy get justice, and may Charles Vallow soon get justice in Arizona. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories. Do me a favor, smash that like button. And that song. So I am ready for this. We all ready for it. I think that it's going to be. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a great thing. And hopefully. We have a fair, righteous verdict. This is script. And Lori gets loaded in a van and taken to Pocatello, where she belongs for the rest of her life. And then it's on to Chad. The next trial, I hope it's quick. By quick, I mean, it doesn't take a year to go to court to prove guilty of Chad, when all the evidence has been presented, everybody has heard it, it's time to go to the next one, and then once that one is completed, it is time to go to Arizona, and let's get on Charles's case, and let's close this out, I hope it all happens in the next year. Do you have any questions regarding that? So it is 1439 hours on January 25th. Any questions? You have any questions for that? No? Okay. okay. All right, have a nice day. Have a nice day. <laughs>